All three energy systems contribute strongly to our climbing performance, but we often gravitate towards blaming our performance or lack of performance when we fall off our project on the glycolytic energy system. We feel the pump, we feel the burn, we fall off and we're easily turned to training that energy system as a way to improve our performance when often training the other two energy systems might be the key to improving our performance. Energy systems are an important concept in climbing. The energy we use while climbing that supplies our forearm muscles and allows us to climb is supplied within our bodies in three different ways with three different energy systems. The first is the alactic energy system, which is expressed by strength and power. The second is the glycolytic energy system, which is expressed in the power endurance or the ability to use our strength and power for durations up to maybe two minutes. And for durations longer than that, we use our aerobic energy system, which is expressed in that long endurance for things lasting two minutes, 10 minutes, hours. We can use a graph of time and force output to look at how our three energy systems work and contribute to our climbing. The alactic energy system is the first one that operates for the shortest amount of time. This lasts anywhere from zero to 15 seconds and expresses the amount of time we're able to utilize this energy system essentially before it's expended and needs to have some rest to recharge. It also produces the highest force and so it has the greatest capability for us to do hard moves, hold on to small holds, make big moves. Moving over, the glycolytic energy system is the intermediate energy system that picks up when our alactic energy system taps out it begins generating pretty high levels of force starting at that 15 second mark where the alactic is burning out and it lasts for you know anywhere from two to three minutes maximum and once you hit that two to three minute mark and the force starts to drop your ability to produce power starts to drop we're fully utilizing the aerobic energy system which is our longest lasting most sustainable energy system and that can power you up long routes, multiple hour efforts, all day efforts. That's all fueled by the aerobic energy system. The way that this diagram is set up really shows the importance of the alactic and the aerobic energy system. Those two are the strong pillars of climbing performance. We have them represented here as buildings. They're long lasting, take longer to build, and they're just a sustainable, stronger foundation for your climbing performance. The glycolytic energy system is represented as a cable that's tensioned between the two buildings. This represents the fact that the glycolytic energy system is a factor of the other two. Its height and its abilities to produce force are dependent on how high the alactic energy system pillar is built and how high the aerobic energy system is built. So the glycolytic energy system can never exceed the abilities or the outputs on either end of it that are constrained by the alactic and the aerobic energy systems. One of the common misconceptions about the energy systems is that they operate sequentially. In reality, they all operate together most of the time in any duration. When we begin hard exercise, the alactic energy system provides a lot of the energy, but the aerobic energy system is already turning on, providing some proportion of that energy. For a three move boulder, you're gonna be mostly alactic, but your aerobic energy system is still contributing a base level of force to each move you're doing. It can't contribute enough to make you do your hardest moves ever, but it's supplying a fraction for each of those hard moves. As we get into more complex styles of climbing like long boulders or sport routes, you're doing intermittent contractions that are at high percentage of your maximum. You're doing hard moves and then you have easier sections. And so we're constantly switching back and forth between these energy systems and utilizing different proportions of the energy systems depending on how hard the climbing is for us 
relatively in each section. If we have a time where force output and basically the demands drop to a low enough level that we can be fully aerobic, our alactic gas tank essentially recharges so we can use that alactic system again. So the interplay between these energy systems is complex and we're always, especially when we're climbing, we're always switching back and forth between these energy systems in different sections of routes, depending on the intensity. Climbing specifically is limited by the forearm muscles, whereas most other sports are limited by a bigger group of muscles. A lot of times it's the legs or it's larger arm muscles, but in any case, the unique thing about climbing is the small size of the muscles that limit our performance. Many of the studies that have been done on energy system contribution in sports show that the glycolytic energy system plays a slightly larger role than it does in climbing. The studies done in climbing show that the alactic and the aerobic are proportionally even more important for climbing than other sports because of the small muscle size involved in limiting performance. A lot of this is due to the fact that we're operating at a high level of our maximum in the forearms on many moves throughout a climb. And when we do that, we occlude blood flow to the forearms and this changes the energy demands of the movement. When it comes to training these energy systems, there's a few important things to think about. When we look at the demands of our sport and the durations of our goal routes, the things we wanna perform on, those things are traditionally defined as glycolytic. The easy thing to do after that is to think, I should focus my training on the glycolytic energy system because I'm performing in that zone. When in reality, the better thing to do is to spend time developing the two foundational pillars of our energy systems by training the alactic energy system and the aerobic energy system. So training the alactic energy system looks like strength and power training. It's short durations, maximal intent, hard sets with a lot of rest. And this is a major part of our year round developmental training that we need to be doing all the time. Um, these adaptations are long lasting and they take a long time to get. It takes years and years and decades maybe to reach your peak potential in your strength and power in any given mo movement. Training the aerobic energy system is another thing that has long lasting effects and is an essential part of our long-term development as climbers. The way we see this play out is our ability to climb harder and harder routes without going into that red zone or even really going into the yellow zone. It's increasing the level we can climb without getting pumped. Combining these two together provides a huge ability to improve over time without ever having to get deep into that glycolytic training. Glycolytic training is the most taxing of the three types and the most metabolically damaging. These are the workouts that are the hardest to recover from. This is your traditional power endurance training, four by fours, metabolic conditioning type things, things that just leave you smoked. This is really effective training but it's more of a top off to a well-built training cycle that's grounded in a foundation of strength and power and aerobic training. And glycolytic training shouldn't make up the bulk of a training plan, but it is an important finisher at the end for a lot of performance goals. The methods we use for training the aerobic energy system are also varied. We use general and specific methods for this as well. General methods for training the aerobic energy system might look like going for a hike, going for a bike ride, just adding more total volume of low intensity work into a given week, whether that's walking, jogging, climbing, total volume of movement equals general aerobic and capacity adaptations. The specific adaptations we look for in climbing and the specific um, methods we use are climbing itself. This is climbing at a relatively low intensity where pump doesn't become a major issue. It's climbing multiple pitches, maybe route doubles, doing long traverses in the gym where 
you maybe have a light pump, but it's never interfering with your movement quality and it's never becoming maybe more than a four out of 10. Staying in that low pump level for aerobic training is really important, both for our physical development and for our technical development. Because we need to spend a fair amount of time in that zone to get the adaptations we need, it's also a great opportunity and should be one of the primary ways that we're training our technique. We should be doing this on high skilled technical terrain at times and really climbing with an intent for good movement, trusting our feet, being precise the entire time. If you're starting to get too pumped, you don't have the mental space to think about your technique. And that's one of the other things that we see with spending too much time training high glycolytic power endurance type things is you spend so much time pumped that you're now spending a large proportion of your climbing time climbing without intent or possibly climbing with poor technique and reinforcing poor movement patterns while climbing. Training the glycolytic energy system is still an important part of a good training cycle and the lead up to some of your best performances. This looks like long circuits, four by fours, really anything that you're getting quite pumped on. A lot of climbers like to do this outside on the route that they're working on, and that can be a really effective strategy. There's a lot of ways to do this, but the key is these phases should be relatively short and we back off on other things while we're doing this because this type of training and these type of adaptations in the glycolytic energy system come at a cost in recovery and ability to perform other types of training. Going back to our analogy of the buildings and the cable, our training time can be spent building the strong foundational pillars of the alactic energy system and the aerobic energy system. These things take time. It takes a career to build these as high as we can get them and we can devote work into them for long periods of time and see slow and steady progress as the building grows higher and higher. We can also put time into training the glycolytic energy system, which is tightening the cable. So the tension of the cable in this analogy represents how well trained our glycolytic energy system is. As you build your strength building and your aerobic building higher, you have higher performance in the glycolytic window, whether or not it's well trained. That cable can still be fairly loose, but as the buildings get higher, the performance gets higher anyway. It is relatively quick to tighten that cable. So that's the last step of a training phase. Once we've spent months and months building our buildings higher, we can do that last step, which is tightening the cable. Training the glycolytic energy system, cranking that cable down will bring our performance up in that level and can stay there for a short period of time. But if we overly focus on training the glycolytic energy system, we're essentially trying to tighten the cable all the time without ever building the buildings higher. We're gonna reach a plateau and we're not gonna be able to get performance higher in any of the realms. And over time, tightening that cable adds additional stress to the system that isn't gonna to lead to improvement. In summary, all three energy systems are crucial for our performance in climbing, and all three work together to fuel most of our climbing performances. The mistake we often make is to overly focus on the glycolytic energy system because it most commonly represents what we feel when we're failing. We often focus on training this at the expense of the alactic and the aerobic energy system. A training plan focused on long-term development of the aerobic and the alactic energy systems with short periods of glycolytic energy system development is really gonna provide the framework for a long lasting career of climbing progression.